Hello! We'll learn about beta blockers today. Beta blockers that are recognized by the the all 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 end with all all like the propranolol, atenolol, bisoprolol, labetalol, and so on. So if you have ever wondered, beta blockers are used for so many indications you see sometimes used for angina, sometimes used for heart failure, glaucoma, thyroid toxicosis, which is basically hyperthyroidism. Arrhythmias, anxiety, you see, used for hypertension, migraine, pheochromocytoma. So it's really interesting question. Why do beta blockers have so many indications? And the answer lies in the name beta blocker itself. If you remember from physiology lectures, beta blockers block the effect of no adrenaline and adrenaline. And as you are aware, adrenaline and no adrenaline or no epinephrine or epinephrine are stress hormones or neurotransmitters that are released when the body is preparing for fight and flight um, response. So, if we look here at the structure of epinephrine, norepinephrine, propranolol, and bisoprolol, you see they are very, very, very similar. You see the similarity between the functional groups, the hydroxyl groups. So they block the effect of epinephrine and norepinephrine, resulting in blockage of the activity of norepinephrine and epinephrine which basically blocking adrenergic receptors and thus blocking uh, their activity the general function is to prepare us for fight or flight response such as running if you feel hypoglycemic to increase your blood glucose and so on for example when you want to run you need to be ready you need you know, your eyes to be wide open, your blood vessels on the superficial skin to dilate, and so on. So, the adrenergic receptors are activated when there's a stress uh, stimuli. So, the heart rate goes up, the bronchial um, tubes um, open up, you increase the, the concentration of glucose in the blood, the liver pumps up the the glucose, the pancreas releases glucagon, and skeletal muscles release uh, glucose as well. Your, your brain goes into arousal mode because of the flight and fight response. So your oxygen uptake increases and so on. The net effect is to increase your heart rate, increase the concentration of glucose in the blood, to relax the bronchial smooth muscles so that you could take take up more oxygen and you know remove more carbon oxide. You increase your arousal and anxiety and restlessness in the central nervous system. You also vasodilate the superficial uh, blood vessels so that you lose more heat effic efficiently. So, um, as you are aware, cautions for beta blockers include for people with bradycardia or people with um, diabetes and people with asthma and COPD and the reason is if you are bradycardic and you give um, beta blockers the person might collapse and go into coma and the same with diabetes because beta blockers interfere with metabolic systems and also block the effect of sympathetic um, response by blocking uh, no adrenaline so and the same happens in the lungs so when you release the when you block the activity of adrenaline you block the smooth muscle receptors in the lungs so basically uh, in a nutshell the blocking of adrenergic receptors re results in blockage of uh, the reduction of glucose concentration in the blood the increase of adrenaline and no adrenaline in the brain the increase of uh, I mean reduction of oxygen in the lungs and thus uh, for the whole body so beta blockers as we have seen are best av avoided with people with asthma or COPD unless essential diabetes because of masking um, sympathetic nervous system which would um, indicate that you are having hypoglycemia uh, also for people with bradycardia people with hypotension uh, prolonged fasting, severe heart block, or worsening heart failure. So, say you, if you are in an exam situation, there are very useful tips for beta blockers. These include the partial agonists or 
beta blockers that have intrinsic uh, sympathomimetic activity, which basically means they don't activate the beta receptors as much as um, full agonists. And these are abbreviated with the first two letters of each drug, for example, oxprinolol, pindolol, asbutol, and silibrolol. So you take the first two letters of each drug and you create this acronym, OXPase, which is so easy to remember in an exam situation. The same with Need by Me. Need by Me is cardioselective beta blockers, which could be used for asthmatics, people with COPD, people with uh, diabetes. So these are atenolol, bisabdolol, metabolol, nabibolol. So if you take the first two letters of each drug, you have uh, an E for nabibolol, atenolol. By me, is a little bit, it's not by, but it's the, same, it's the same pronunciation. So it's by, sobrolol, and metabolol. If you go on, we have water-soluble beta blockers that are avoided in people with um, kidney failure. So water-soluble beta blockers are atenolol, thalibrolol, nadolol, and sotolol. So you have sowed Cena, or you could remember by remembering this guy, John Cena. So basically, if you if you if you have someone with kidney failure, you could use a lipid soluble beta blocker. So that that means you avoid the problem of um, of metabol of the excretion of water soluble beta blockers by the kidney, and it's also important to remember that you need to start at a very low dose and titrate up the dose, and you do not stop beta blockers abruptly because if you stop it abruptly, abruptly say for, for someone with heart failure, you could cause um, the cardiac energy needs might increase, resulting in myocardial insufficiency and um, death. So it's very important you just suddenly stop beta blockers. And also not starting at the highest dose. First, you need to start like by sobrolol, 1.25 milligram, and then going up all the way to 10 milligram. So, um, if we look at interactions of beta blockers, basically there are two drugs you need to avoid: verapamil and diltiazem. At any rate, they could be asystole and death because of the strong inotropic uh, potential of these uh, calcium channel blockers. So, avoid these two. And the other thing is, you need to think how drugs work. So, if you see uh, drugs that reduce the blood pressure, like diuretics, alpha blockers, calcium channel blockers, antiarrhythmic drugs, because remember, sotolol is mainly used for its antiarrhythmic um, properties. So, if you use uh, with antiarrhythmic drugs like amiodrol or ox. Uh, or drugs that increase the QT uh, prolongal intervention, like uh, citalopram, some antimalarials. You need to be you need to be vigilant for any concomitant potenti potentiation of uh, beta blockade. Also, bradycardia, hypotension, asystole could follow because of the risk of causing of using two drugs which act on the same uh, pathway. So I hope this video helps you with learning beta blockers and getting you ready for exam and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.